You know, uh, my daughters are kind of at that point in, in their high school career and uh, where they just kind of felt like now was the right time. And with my age, I'm feeling like, you know, if you're if you're ever going to do it, now's the time. And, and it just so happened that, you know, kind of things fell into place and felt really comfortable with Coach Satake and, and uh, everybody that's coming on board. And so uh, just felt like, you know, you pray about it and you get those answers and, and uh, really felt like it was the, the time to go, the thing to do. How hard of a decision was it? Oh, it was extremely hard. Um, you know, I, you get kind of settled in your ways. Uh, you know, had a, a great situation with St. Andrews down in Austin and uh, loved the kids I was working with. And so, you know, with all those things, uh, you know, it was it was hard to come to that decision. But uh, again, just felt like, you know, in, in my heart that that was the right time and the right thing to do. And, and uh, you know, it was hard telling them, but at the same time, uh, super excited to be here. And, and uh, you know, just, uh, you know, felt a little surreal the first day walking in. and trying to figure out which office you're going to pick, you know, so, uh, but it was, it was a really tough decision and that's, you know, a, a great credit to the people at St. Andrews. You got, sorry, when you got back here, how, how soon till you saw Shirley again? Yeah, I think Shirley was around uh, a couple days later. She uh, made her way in, you know, it was holiday break and so not many people were around, which was kind of nice to be able to come in and settle in, but, uh, you know, it was great to see Shirley and have her around still. Uh, I, you know, love uh, the people that I had an opportunity to be around when I was here as a player and student, and uh, you know, thankful that some of those people are still here. If back in the day, she's one of the few, right, that would still be here. She is. She's uh, she's been in for the long haul, and so it's great to see friendly faces. What do you say to the skeptics who don't think a quote high school coach can step in and coordinate a major college offense? Well, that was uh, something I thought about, you know, trying to make the decision to come in. It's, uh, you know, obviously a, a big jump um, that way, um, you know, but I, I saw Chad Morris, he coached at the high school my daughters uh, went to and knew him, um, and he made the jump to Tulsa and uh, did some great things there, and then obviously Clemson and, and now the head coach at SMU. So. Um, you know, I, I was well aware of the pressures here and uh, the scrutiny that may come with it, but um, felt like, you know, uh, that given the opportunity um, and people, you know, believed in me that, you know, we're, we're going to jump right in and, and go to work and there's going to be some, some learning curves and some things maybe that come up that uh, haven't been involved with before on that side of things at this level. but. I uh, feel like, you know, with the guys we're going to have around around me and uh, around our staff that uh, we'll, I'll be a quick learner and, and hopefully uh, we'll overcome those things. Coach Lamb mentioned that there are actually more similarities going from being a high school head coach to the college. Is there anything from St. Andrews that you feel like you can take uh, in particular into this job? Well, definitely. Um, you know, being a head coach, I wore a lot of hats at a small school like that. Um, and. You know, offensively, um, you know, trying to formulate a system year to year uh, with the limited number of players you have uh, really, I think, prepares you for, uh, you know, coming in and, and figuring out what we can do here, you know, um, based on what you have to work with. You know, as, as a coach, uh, it's my job to figure out what we have to work with and then scheme around those guys. You know, there's certain things you come in with an idea you'd like to do. But you know, as you go through spring ball and you get an idea of what those what those guys can do best, uh, then we'll kind of tailor the offense towards that uh, skill set, and that's something I I learned a long time ago. And, and Norm Chow, I thought, was a great uh, example of that. That he took the talent he had and allowed them to, to be successful by game planning and, and scheming and putting a system in around what the talent level was that he had. Will you be the quarterbacks coach as well? I will. That's the plan right now. Um, you know, I'll be working with the quarterbacks closely, and uh, you know, excited about that. That's a great group. Have you Obviously, spoken Taylor to what you have, but ultimately, what would you like to do? You said you come in with an idea. What is that idea? You know, the the idea is to come in and be balanced. Uh, you know, I played here, and I, I saw a stat on Twitter. Uh, somebody posted yesterday that you know my stat line from the Hawaii game my senior year I was 14 of 20. So. <laughs> People kind of have the impression that we threw it every down here back then, and uh, 
you know, there were games where we did have to throw it 40 or 50 times, but, you know, for the most part, it was 25 to 30, and we ran the ball, you know, there have been 1,000-yard rushers here, and and uh, you want to be balanced, you know, in today's game, you've got to keep the defense honest, and and stay, you know, within side of the chains, and, uh, you know, take possession and, and move the football, and we'll take our shots, you know, we're going to have some opportunities, but, uh, you know, I'd like to see a little more use of the tight end. Uh, obviously, you know, be some two back and, you know, we'll get to multiple formations. So, again, you know, as I told the guys this morning, uh, if, if you can play, we'll find a spot for you and we'll, we'll create some opportunities for you. So, uh, that'll be up to kind of what we have to work with um, come August. What do you think of Ty, or excuse me, Tanner? Um, this is a freshman coming in playing as well as he did, and how much are you looking forward to coaching him? Well, Tanner is a very poised young man, you know, and, and obviously he's been on a mission and, and a little older than your typical true freshman. But uh, to come in and, and uh, have to play in that situation, uh, you know, is remarkable with what he did, you know, because he didn't have an off season to get ready and some of those things just getting back. So um, can't say enough good things about the way he handled himself. and. Uh, and the way he played, and I'm, I know he's excited to have an off season and get his body going and, and uh, get his feet underneath him for the next year. Ty, what are your conversations, if you can share them, with, uh, with Taysom and, and those two quarterbacks going into your first spring, even though Taysom will still be out hurt? Sure, it's, uh, you know, conversations have been great with Taysom. You know, he's a, a great person, and I've had a relationship with him uh, over the last couple years, just, uh, you know, Nothing where we talked every week, but uh, every time we saw each other, we talked a little football and uh, have really appreciated what he's brought to the program. And so, you know, definitely hope he's back. You know, we, we want him here. And, and uh, I said it, you know, a couple of years ago, he's, he's probably the greatest athlete to play the quarterback position here. No offense to Steve Young, but, uh, you know, <laughs> Taysom's put together a lot better than Steve was. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> he gives me a hard time about my chicken leg, so I got to <laughs> take my chef while I can. But, uh, yeah, you know, uh, I mean, Taysom's a great player, and uh, we, we want him back. He's been a leader for this team and unit. And, you know, I, I told the guys today, I said, there should be competition at every position, and that's what makes you great. Not that you can't work together through it, and, and everybody just needs to focus on being the best player they can be and let the coaches figure out the rest. Talking about your quarterbacks, are you going to play under center mainly or are you going to let them play shotgun? What are you going to do? We'll do both. Okay. You know, I'd, I'd like to see us under center some. And, uh, you know, I think with play action and some of those types of things, you sell it a little better. Uh, but again, you know, if Taysom's there and, and he gives the, just the threat of him running, you know, keeps people at home sometimes. So, uh, you know, We'll, we'll scheme and we'll, we'll game plan, and it may be a week-to-week -week type of thing, depending on what we see up front and try to give our guys a chance. So, uh, you know, I, I expect us to be multiple in everything we do, uh, formations, personnel, under center, shotgun, uh, whatever it is, we're going to, you know, try to find ways to create opportunities. Are you prepared to put in all the work that's necessary as a recruiter? I wouldn't be here if I wasn't. Uh, you know, I, I, I know what I'm getting into. I, Tried to educate my wife uh, when we were going through this decision, and she she really wanted to see me make this move. Um, you know, she's kind of seen me at the high school level and some of the frustrations I've had with limited resources uh, to work with. So uh, she really was pushing to to go for it, and uh, and so with that, you know, I let her know, you know, we're going to be on the road in the spring, and uh, going to put some time in. We've got recruits coming in the next few weeks, and. Uh, weekends and so you know I'm gonna have to be here and they'll move out in July and uh, so I'm, I'm prepared to do whatever I need to do to, to see things continue to be successful here. Tom, what has Coach LaBelle ever said to you? Good advice? Oh, uh, he's a uh, he's great, uh, great man. You know, nothing but great memories of, of Coach Edwards, and we've stayed in contact. And he's, you know, he's tried to get me here on a couple other occasions, and just, you know, you need to be here, uh, kind of thing. And and so, you know, through this whole thing, he's he's just been a great support. And uh, you know, I love Coach Edwards, and and uh, you know, he's he's a guy that you can kind of go to and, and pick his brain on things. And, and you know, I, I did that when I took the job at St. Andrews. You know, how did you, how did you turn around BYU when you took the job? Because they weren't very good then, and we weren't very good at St. Andrews. And he said, you know, just focus on the things you have, and don't worry about the things you don't, because that's not going to change. And 
is great advice, you know. So uh, I try to, you know, pick his brain whenever I can. Ty, as you look at this building, uh, every one of your games are on national TV now. You have your own TV network. So much is different from when you were here, but the brand of BYU football as you see it from all those years out of state, where is it? Well, you know, I think uh, the brand's in good shape right now. So, you know, I mean, Bronco and, and his staff did a great job. They won a ton of football games. There's a lot of talent in that meeting room, and uh, things are in good shape. You know, it's our job to keep it headed that direction and to try to keep improving. And, uh, you know, so, you know, it, it's exciting to be here. Um, you know, the, the magnitude of it all with the schedule and all those things. Um, you understand what you're getting into and as a player I think probably understand it better than anybody, especially at the quarterback position. Um, you know, you understand what's expected and, and you know, you go out and, and you try to execute and uh, put guys in position to be successful and that's my job offensively. Ty, going back to recruiting, you were recruiting in high school. You've been a high school coach. You've had recruiters come to you. How's that going to help you? And now, as you make the transition, actually going out and recruiting. Well, as a private school coach, you know we we are able to we call it you know, I mean soft recruit where <laughs> there's got to be a contact made first. But um, once that happens, then you put the full court press on them. So I've been in kids' homes. I've been in you know meetings with parents and trying to sell you know our high school for for people. So I've been kind of technically doing that for the last six years and uh, you know it's been uh, you know obviously there's some more to it at this level but you know at the end of the day you're you're uh, be honest with the kids and share your experience and the great things you know BYU was able to do for me and and uh, hope that you know those those kids and those parents are able to have that same vision and want the same things for their kid that my parents wanted for me. Is there ever a good time to reach down and Pull out the Heisman Trophy, put it on a recruit sitting room table. I mean, uh, Kalani's kind of mentioned I should probably take it with me, but uh, that won't happen. Maybe I'll wear the ring a little bit, but uh, I don't know. I see these coaches come through with their big ring, and I'm like, okay, you know, the kids might like it, but I don't know if the parents care too much about it. How about the hunting and the outdoor seasons in here? Are they good enough here in Utah? Uh, well, I'll be in the office, I'm sure, during those seasons. So, uh, you know, we'll keep the ranch and hopefully be able to slip down after bowl games and those kind of things maybe for a week here and there. But, uh, you, know, I've, you know, I've made the commitment to come here and try to be the best coach I can be, better, you know. And uh, with that, you know, you give up other things that, that maybe uh, you know aren't as important at this time. Ty, what was it like to stand in front of the group of kids today in that meeting room and talk to them? It was great, you know, to finally have interaction with the players. You know, we were here last uh, last week, and you know, nobody was around, and you know, it's kind of uh, a dead time. And he's like, we, I want to get to football. You know, we need to get talking football and talking to the team. And then afterwards, a few of them stopped in the office and. Uh, you know, we talked, and so you know, it was uh, it was really a great experience to have that first opportunity to kind of be the guy in front of them, talking and, and letting them know, you know, kind of expectations and the things that uh, we're going to try to do to help them be successful. What was your message to them? To uh, you know, we've got to out execute people. We've got to be ready to go and you know, jump in, learn the new system, new terminology. You know, there's going to be some rough spots along the way and some questions that you have, but. You know, we, we as coaches want them in our offices and communicating and, and feedback from them as well. This is our offense. It's not my offense. You know, this is this whole group's offense, and we want feedback and communication and, and to everybody to be accountable to each other. Are you into analytics at all, and what do you think are going to be the most important offensive indicators to you? You know, I, I haven't been a big analytical guy. Um, you know, I think there's, there's certain stats that jump out. Obviously, turnovers are a big part of that. So, you know, we've got to take care of the football. Penalties, uh, you know, factor into some of those things. But, you know, um, right now, you know, it's it's January. We're focused on recruiting, um, putting a staff together, getting some other guys in here. And, and then we'll sit down and, and really finalize, you know, kind of our plan going into spring ball. But, um, you know, football is football. At the end of the day, you got to get first downs. you got to take care of the football. And you got to score points in the red zone. So. You know, those are things that we'll we'll always focus on and continue to, to try to be good at that they've, they've done in the past. What's your playbook look like right now? Like the things you know are going to be part of your offense? I mean, uh, you know, you've got your, your route combinations, your route trees and terminology and, and 
and uh, you know my biggest concern is okay how do we get it to the quarterback <laughs> uh, so you know you work through some of those things with the quarterbacks and the staff and what works best for them maybe a wristband or signals or all the different possibilities the boards uh, may show up again you don't know yet but uh, you know the playbook is a lot of things I picked up along the way um, both you know in the NFL here at BYU um, things that you pick up from other people you know football is football and you see in something that works you incorporate it into what you want to do and again a lot of it will dictate on the personnel we have and, and things that they can be good at so um, you know playbooks wide open and, and I'll give those guys as much as they can handle and if, if it's too much and we got to pull back because we can't play fast because it's it's too much then we'll pull back and we'll focus on you know some of the more basic type of things so um, you know you're you're only allowed so many hours with guys too it's not the NFL you know it's, it's more than high school but it's a lot less than the NFL so you got to be smart and, and how you go about you know changing too much and, and putting too much in and and just allow guys to play fast and that's one thing I've learned in my last six years at the high school level is you got to you got to let kids play and uh, they can't be out there thinking too much but you know with the, the guys we have and the experience they have I feel like we'll be able to open it up pretty good and be able to, to have a full playbook by the time we get to that first game. Are there any starters on offense in your mind right now? I mean they're all new to me I've seen them play on TV but uh, you know everybody's going to be out there competing and they've got to learn it and they've got to play it and so you know at this point you know it, there's guys that will probably jump in the huddle first because they've done it and, and guys kind of know the pecking order but as far as the coaches go you know guys change from year to year there's guys coming off of missions there's you know be recruits coming in uh, you know everybody's got an opportunity to show what they can do and, and be in a little different type of system there might be some opportunities for guys to to play you know a little different different type of position that you know a different type of skill set so uh, right now, you know, there, there's probably some guys that feel pretty secure about things and, and that we feel pretty good about, but at the end of the day, you got to perform, you got to play and, and prove you can be that guy week in and week out. Is Tanner one of those guys that feels secure? I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, you know, I've just barely spoke to him today uh, after our team meeting briefly on, on uh, kind of what the system looked like. And so, um, you know, if, if Taysom comes back, I fully expect those two to, to push each other. And, uh, you know, like I said, love to have Taysom. Um, you know, two guys are better than one. I know that. Uh, and you look at what happened last year. So, um, you know, nothing's been set in stone or in writing, and, and nobody's been promised anything. We want both guys back, and, and they ought to push each other and work together through this whole thing and, and support each other. And, and uh, you got Bo Hodge sitting there, you know, wondering where he fits in. And Bo's a great player. They wouldn't be here if they couldn't play. And so they should all want to be that guy. How demanding are you with your quarterbacks? I put a lot on the quarterback shoulders. You know, we're gonna um, we're gonna shift and motion, and they got to be able to handle all that and and uh, get people set up. And you know, may have them direct protection. You know, they're gonna have to understand the whole package. So there'll be a lot put on their shoulders. And you know, I think part of the development is. If they do want to play at that next level, there shouldn't be any questions when they get there that they can handle a lot of what's going to be thrown at them. So, um, you know, those are the guys I think we've got probably a lot of confidence in right now and, and uh, feel like they can handle, you know, as much as we can give them. So, you know, they'll have to learn a new language a little bit, but uh, they're sharp guys and they'll pick it up. And so if you can put more on their shoulders than maybe a, a freshman receiver, you do that. What, what will it be like for you to take the field against Arizona down there in Glendale? Uh, you know, I've, I've had butterflies ever since I took the job, you know, uh, wake up at 5 in the morning, how we're going to do this, and, and uh, some sleepless nights. But, you know, I, I think uh, I'm looking forward to getting to the games. You know, I enjoy the game planning side of things and, and scheming against teams and, you know, okay, how do we beat this coverage and how do we protect against this blitz and those kind of things that, you know, you dig into once the season gets here. And, and uh, I'm really looking forward to, to going out with the team and, and being a part of it. You know, it's, uh, you know, at whatever level you are, it, it's all relative. You know, I, I know the first time I took the field with the high school team, it was, you know, kind of surreal, uh, you know, jumping back in. And it'll be that way again, you know, this uh, 
this August. So, you know, I'm excited about it. Last question. You've, you've, been, be, you've you... been around a lot of great head coaches in your career. In this short time that you've known Kalani, what what do you think he's going to bring to this program and to make it successful? Kalani, uh, Kalani brings that, you know, just the, the feel of, I think, you know, assures everybody that he's here for them. You know, he's he's here to, to help them succeed. And uh, just that natural leader type of feel with him. You know, he's not going to blow you away with speeches and try to create, you know, those kind of things. Um, he wants guys to, to feel at home here and to feel a part of it. And I think we all feel that at this point. And, you know, he's, he's a, just a natural leader in that he doesn't feel like he's got to be the guy in front all the time. He, you know, he's asked, you know, how we feel about things in staff meetings and gets our opinions and then ultimately makes a final decision. But, uh, man, you know, he's been great to, to work with thus far and, and just feel real at ease and, and giving you confidence that, you know, we're going to do this. And uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, as a player, former player, I think you appreciate that. I know I did as a quarterback that, you know, just that calming demeanor that, Everything's okay. We do our thing. We do what we're supposed to. Things will be good. Will you be the guy that makes the call on finding out your offensive staff, or will it be Kalani's call? Now, you know, we work in collaboration. You know, he's allowed me to kind of, you know, kind of take it and run with it and interview guys, and then, you know, I always come back to him. You know, so he's he's, uh, he's experienced, and you know, uh, hired guys at the high school level, and uh, a similar process, but. You know, I, I want to get feedback from him too on his thoughts, and he knows some of the guys, and so it's a, you know, an effort. And talk to Ed Lamb, and Ed knows some of the guys, and so it's great to have experience around you, so that, you know, when we put a staff together, we're all comfortable with each other, and, and we know that we have the best interests of the program at heart. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Thank Thank you. Thank you.